Hello everyone, sorry I haven't uploaded in a while, I have been ridiculously busy but I am back to normal hopefully now, I'm in the process of having a week off so I'm trying to catch up with everything now but I thought I would do a very very late September wrap up because I never told you how I did in September I am quite pleased with what I read in September, I read quite a lot so without further ado let's just get started. The first book I read was In Order to Live by Yeonmi Park and this is about her escape from North Korea. This is a true story and it is just incredible. This lady is just so inspiring, so incredible, so strong and I just love her. She's amazing. She's done so so well with her life since escaping North Korea. This is a really heartbreaking story. The things that you and me and her family have been through is just horrendous. You can't even imagine it unless you've been through it yourself. Things like human trafficking and she, she witnessed her mum being raped in front of her. It is absolutely horrendous. So her life now, you just think how have you managed this? she's amazing i absolutely recommend this probably older readers though don't read it if you're younger yet yeah, wait a little bit because obviously there is some incredibly hard-hitting topics in this story this generally taught me a lot about north korea as well and how horrific it is and how it's run and how they think it's very normal that it's run like that because they don't know any different it's quite mind-blown in a sense but I really hope one day, and I know I'm being really optimistic here, but I hope one day, you know, things in North Korea start looking up and their lives become a lot more better because it's not fair. The things they go through are just unbelievably ridiculous and heartbreaking. I can't, I can't use any other word. It is heartbreaking. I think this is a story everyone needs to read, though. I, at some point in your lives, like I said, if you're younger, read it. I wouldn't recommend it straight away read it when you get a little bit older but I absolutely love this and I give it 5 out of 5 stars. The next book I read was A Series of Unfortunate Events, The Miserable Mill which is the fourth book in the series and I really enjoyed this one. This is probably one of my favourite ones in the series. In this one we see the Baudelaire's having a stay at the mill and they work there so they're not just staying with the Guardian this time they're actually working which I thought was quite a nice break from the usual stories in the previous books because they've stayed with Guardians and then Count Olaf's turned up and then all things have gone a bit crazy but in this one they were in a slightly different situation which I quite enjoyed. Although they're working there they're not getting trekked very nicely and they only get a five minute lunch break and their lunch consists of a piece of gum each, that's it, that's all they're allowed, which is ridiculous. Sunny even works, the little baby, it is just so silly. <laughs> I quite liked that I could sense through the board layers that they were waiting for Count Olaf just to make an appearance because they just expect it now and I, I just like that, I like that you could feel his presence throughout the whole thing even though he wasn't there throughout the whole thing. And I also loved that Klaus had more of an individual role in this story as well because I love how they stick together but he had a more sort of featured role and you got to know Klaus a bit better and also see his individuality as well, his independence because Although they are quite independent, they do rely on each other obviously for everything they've been through but it was quite nice to see Klaus have that independent kind of role in this story. I'm really excited to start the next book as well because they are going to a boarding school and I love stories about boarding schools so I'm really excited to read that one and I give this one a 5 out of 5 stars because I really really enjoyed this story. And then I went on a bit of a Roald Dahl splurge, kind of in this sort of sense. The first book I read of Roald Dahl's was Danny the Champion of the World. And although this isn't one of my favourite Roald Dahl books, I did still really enjoy it. If you don't know what this is about, this is about Danny and his dad and his dad owns a fill-in station and one night Danny is asleep and he wakes up and his dad isn't there and he's wondering where he's gone. Sometimes he does just nip out and come back but this time he hasn't come back and Danny's wondering where he's gone so he ends up trying to find him and soon realises that his dad has started pheasant poaching. This really interests Danny, it doesn't interest me at all but it really interests Danny and it's about them trying to get their own back on somebody who thinks a little bit too much of themselves and isn't a very nice person and it involves the pheasant poaching and just getting their own back on him. I don't really want to say too much because I don't want to spoil it but it is really really good. I love Danny as he was such a sweet little boy and although he's a young character he came across as quite a lot older because he knew how to do lots of different chores and things that people his age wouldn't 
usually know how to do and he looked after his dad a lot as well and I love the connection between him and his dad you could really see a strong relationship there and just how much they loved each other and how much they supported each other the only thing I'd say is every now and again I felt like the story was dragging a little bit and I was waiting for something else to happen and that's when my attention started wandering elsewhere because it does but apart from that I did quite like it but like I said it wasn't one of my favourite books in the Roald Dahl series but I will still say Roald Dahl's dialogue writing is brilliant in this he is so funny when it comes to dialogue and I give this book three out of five stars the next Roald Dahl book I read was The Magic Finger and this is about a little girl who isn't actually named all throughout the story but when she gets angry at someone she casts a spell on them using her magic finger and they have some very funny consequences let's just say this is a really imaginative story it is really really funny it is such a short little book it's only like 50 odd pages long it's not very long at all so it took me next to no time to read again the humor in Roald Dahl's writing is just hilarious his dialogue once again was just fantastic however I can't work out whether I like the girl being unnamed or whether I'd prefer her to be named I don't know if that just helps me get attached to characters a little bit more if they're named I'm not sure but I, I sort of liked it because it was different but I'm not sure I'm really torn on that one I do think the girl in this story and Matilda would get along really well though because they're both quite mischievous they've both got cheeky personalities and obviously they've both got magic powers so they could get up to so much mischief together and I think it would be hilarious I wish we could see like a merge of these two stories together because that would just be fantastic I gave this one 4 out of 5 stars. It wasn't one of my favourites again, but it is very difficult to get higher than Matilda in my books. But I absolutely loved it still, so that's why I give it 4 out of 5 stars. And the next Roald Dahl book I read was The Twits, and this is one of the funny ones. I really, really enjoy reading about these two. These are probably two of my favourite pairs to read about in the Roald Dahl books. They are just hilarious. Mrs and Mr Twit hate each other literally hate each other, they live together but they can't stand each other and they like to play pranks on each other and these are just absolutely hilarious pranks yeah it's just really funny again Roald Dahl's just brilliant at funny books clearly I love the twits because I mean I know they're really horrible characters they're awful characters but they are so stupid and that just makes them absolutely hilarious to read about I also really like the muggle monkeys because the twits don't realise that they understand what they're saying they don't think the monkeys can understand them but actually they can and because of this they end up kind of getting their own back and stuff like that it's very funny I think anyone of any age can really read this story and get something out of it because if you're older you can laugh at how ridiculous it is if you're younger it's gonna make you laugh as well it's quite entertaining for younger readers but I give this four out of five stars I absolutely loved it it was just hilarious and the last book I read of Roald Dahl's books was The Witches and this I am currently doing with the dance fiction class so I'm really excited about that it's going really well The Witches is about a little boy and his grandma and his grandma explains to the little boy about witches and how they are and how they come across as just normal women but in fact there's little things to look out for one day the boy is in a hotel and he ends up coming across a huge group of witches and finds out that those witches are making a formula to try and turn all children into mice so he tries to sort the situation out, get his own back on the witches, try to stop them from doing all of this and a lot of crazy stuff occurs it's just, it's a fun book this one, I actually really really enjoy this one I enjoy most of Roald Dahl's books if not all of them to be honest at some point but this one is probably one of my top ones I love each and every one of the characters in this, they're all so different from each other and it's quite nice to see a contrast between all of the characters. It's a really entertaining story, it kept me engaged the whole way through, it's just one of those books that I do think everyone should read, everyone should read The Witches. If you only read like three of Roald Dahl books, I think you should read The Witches, The BFG and Matilda. They're like my top three. But I do recommend reading all of them because they're all just brilliant. And the final book I read, which wasn't a Roald Dahl book, I sort of stopped my Roald Dahl splurge after that, was We Were Liars by E. Lockhart. Now I heard absolutely amazing things about this story. I It is massively hyped, or was massively hyped at some point on booktube, and over the 
bookstagram platforms and book related twitter pages and things like that it was hugely hyped so i was really int interested to read this story at the beginning i was really engaged i got engaged really quickly i was really enjoying it I wanted to know what was going on, it was all very mysterious and I really like mis mysterious stories. However, as the story progressed, I did find it quite difficult to keep up with which character was which because there are so many and I was trying to work out who they were and how they were linked to the main character and how this could possibly have an effect on the main character. It was just very difficult to keep track of and because of this I could not get attached to any of the characters and that is one thing that you know by now I absolutely love to do I just could not get attached to these characters in this story at all the writing style was very different to what I'm used to it was quite poetic and that's quite nice but it did take a while to get used to but I think once I got used to it that was fine and I did start enjoying the story a little bit more but it did take a little while to get into I really enjoyed the ending of the story actually, I thought it was built up really well, that was all exciting and how it was concluded, I thought that was really really good and it's not something I guess throughout, whereas I think quite a lot of the time with these kind of stories I do guess what's going to happen and I didn't this time around. So yeah, I did enjoy parts of this story and I didn't enjoy parts of this story, I did have a few issues with it and for that I give it 3 out of 5 stars, which may be a little bit of an unpopular opinion but we can't all like the same things. So that is it for my September wrap up, my very late September wrap up. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you had an amazing September reading month. I will be updating you with what I am currently reading in October very very soon, hopefully in the next couple of days, so look forward to that. All of my social media links are in the description below if you want to go check any of those out and I will see you all in my next video very very soon. Bye!